Good morning, Jenny from Inspired in Life. <clears throat> I hope your day's going well, started well, whenever you listen to this. Um, so as you know, I talk a lot about we don't experience the world, we experience our thinking. Your thinking creates your feelings. And we project that out into the world. This man made me feel like this, she did that. The snow is making, the snow could be great, the snow could be bad. Depends on the person and what they're thinking. So we all have very different experiences of different things. And as you've grown up, you've learned different things. And you've learned things about yourself. So when you were four, you couldn't cook, you probably couldn't dress yourself very well. Um, you couldn't drive a car, but you learned. But there's many things in life where we go, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that or I've got a bad back and we give it a label and we give it, make it a thing and we feel like we're stuck with it. And when we feel like we're stuck with something and it could be fear, worry, stress, anxiety, pain, disease, a circumstance in your life, things start to shrink down. And we may then start to try to do things. You may start to try and do things to make you feel better. Now that could be do more yoga, do more meditation, go for a run. It could be eating, drinking, watching more TV. And sometimes when we feel really stuck, that is what we do. That's depression, that you just feel that there's nothing you can do. Or anxiety, you just worry about what's going to happen. And we seek outside of ourselves. But this morning I want to do a quick meditation or a quick reflection. And we're always waiting for the next thing so that it can feel better. When the snow's gone, when lockdown's over. But you only have now. You're projecting into the future. Your future is your thinking. So I invite you just to close your eyes for a second or for a few minutes. So just close your eyes. And sometimes the thought of doing meditation can be a distraction because meditation isn't something that we need to do. You were built to live in a state of meditation. A meditation, just listen. You don't know what it is that I'm going to say next. So just listen. And as you really listen, like really listen to me. In that state of listening, you become quiet. Your mind, you can't think and listen at the same time. So already you're in a state of meditation. It isn't something that you do. It's something that you drop into. Something that's always there, a state of being that's always there before all your thinking. The thinking that can cause happiness and joy and the thinking that can cause sadness and worry and stress. And we feel like we need to do things, get more happiness, get less stress. But actually... Your innate health, your innate well-being is already right here, right now. It's not a doing. So again, become quiet, listen. And there will be noise. Most people think that meditation is quieting the mind. But it's in the not thinking you hear, you learn to hear. And in the quiet of your mind, you hear the whispers of your soul. It's like having your own inner sat-nav guiding you each step of the way along the right thing to say, the right place to do, the right thing to eat. But there's so much conditioning normally over the top of that. I should do this and need to do that and I've got to go die and just become more quiet. And as you become quite more quiet, not only can you hear, you can start to feel. So beyond all the worrying emotions, there's a state of calm, a state of peace. It is a state of love, not my romantic love, just a state of love. So just rest a little deeper into that state of love. And here, 
is well-being, peace, love, joy, happiness. Self-care. This is self-care. It's not, and you can have a bath, but if you're having a bath or doing yoga and you're still in your butt, I've got to need to. This is actual. Just become even more quiet and know that you're when you're meant to do something, the impulse will arise. And I invite you just to sit, to stay in this state for as long as you can. And imagine you're in the most comfy chair and you're just gonna stay there until it arises, not from your mind. It's a deeper impulse, a deeper whisper. It's like if you needed a wee, it'd be, I need a wee. It's not, oh, I need to, I've got to. And that part of your mind will squeal. Thinking about all the things you should be doing that you need to do that everyone else is doing that you haven't got. And just let it float by like the clouds float past the sky. As you just drift a little deeper. And here is your well-being, your calm, your peace. The state of love that you've been seeking for all your life. And when you're in this state, you're able to be more compassionate, more kind, more generous to others. So just notice where you are during the day. That if you start to feel angry, resentful, know that you've gone back into your thinking, you've come out of this state. But any time those people or that thing doesn't need to change, you can drop back in. So I invite you to just stay for as long as you can and just enjoy that state and keep coming back to it throughout the day. It's like you keep cutting the chain of your thinking and soon the thinking becomes more quiet and your feelings begin to stabilise in this new state of peace and ease. Remember, I'm starting up my new Facebook group. It's a private group, Inspired to Thrive. If you want information for that, please, you can email me, text me, message me. And also, I have a newsletter for all the different things that I run. I do meditation evenings, relaxation evenings, yoga classes. If you're interested, you can either ring me or, again, give me your email address and I'll send you out. I do a weekly mailing newsletter. If you're interested, let me know. Here's to an inspired in life. Namaste. Enjoy your day.